I've got a request. What's up everybody, it's me Jordan, and I'm back with another drawing video. This time I'm drawing Weiss from the anime Ruby. As you can tell from my intro, this was a request I got, and it's not a tutorial, but hopefully you'll find it helpful anyway. I'll try and give some general advice and a couple of tips along the way, which might be able to help you out if you want to draw this character as well. So I just want to start off by saying, I know nothing about this anime. I use reference for this and I changed the line work up a tiny bit. I added some extra kind of hair strands and stuff like that, but it is very much a reference. So some of you guys might have already seen this image, but I tried to mix it up a little bit in the way that I colored it, especially in the hair. But at the moment I'm coloring the skin, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about that and some of the techniques that I like to use. I'm a really big fan of using light purples and violets for shading, and I think it looks especially good for shading the skin because you've got some light pinks in the blushes on the cheeks and then that looks really cool with the shading of the purple as well. I think it works especially well with this character because, well I haven't seen the anime, I know nothing about it, but she looks like she does ice magic or something, I imagine, just from her colour scheme and everything. She basically just looks like the anime version of Elsa from Frozen. It's kind of crazy how much she looks like Elsa. I don't know <laughs> if that's just me. It can't just be me. She looks exactly like Elsa. Alright, she looks a little bit different, but now I'm just getting off topic. I was trying to talk about the skin. So basically the idea behind why I think the blues and the purples look good for shading the skin is because it's kind of just icy colours. It's like a really cool shading like literally cool, not just saying it looks cool. Uh, <laughs> now I'm just confusing myself, but you know what I'm trying to say. So I like to do a little bit of the shading with my Prismacolor pencils as well, just to kind of get into the little corners. It's a little bit easier getting in the corners with a sharp pencil than with a Copic marker because sometimes the Copic markers can bleed a little bit. So I like to get in the nice tight corners with the pencils and darken up that as well. A little tip, a little pro tip, get out your pads and pencils because school is in session. <laughs> um, don't be too worried if you go outside of the lines a little bit with your colouring. None of us are perfect, I do it sometimes as well, even though I like to hide it. <laughs> I generally touch up my lines anyway, so even after I've done the line work and then I've gone in a coloured, Often I find sometimes the line work can get a little bit dull if you're working over it a lot and especially if you're using Prismacolors a lot as well. Your line work can kind of lose some of its darkness. It's kind of hard to explain but when you're working over that area a lot it can just kind of wear the paper down a little bit and the line work will just kind of look a little bit more dull. And sometimes you want to thicken the lines up as well so if you've kind of gone outside of the lines a little bit that's all cool because you can just kind of go over that again and that's pretty much what I do with most of my drawings. A lot of the times I start out with some really fine line work and I actually feel that it'll look better with some thicker lines, kind of bring out certain parts of the character, make it pop a little bit more and kind of define it more from the background. And I do that a lot with this drawing here. I don't think I record a lot of the process but you'll kind of see later that I'll go in and thicken it up and it kind of makes it look a lot better. The main challenge of drawing this character is trying to make it look interesting with such a limited colour palette. She's basically all white, with the exception of the red velvet that she's got going on in her little jacket thing that she's wearing. I don't know what it is, but it's pretty cool that they've brought in such a feature colour like red for this character because if they didn't have it, I think this character would look pretty bland, in my opinion. So my goal with this was to bring in some other colours. I brought in lots of tones of grey with more purples and light blues. Pretty much what I like doing with the skin as well, but I brought that into the hair. You just have to be careful that you don't go too far with the greys, otherwise it's just going to look like an old lady pretty much, but 
I think it turned out okay. It wasn't too overpowering with those grey tones. There's a lot of kind of blue in there as well. And also a little bit of light violet, which I think helped as well. Something to keep in mind when doing shading with grey Copic markers is there's actually four different types, I believe. There are cool greys, neutral greys, toner greys, and warm greys. So you can use them for different effects. The colours vary slightly, and if you're not really looking for it, you might not notice, but if you actually look carefully, you can tell between the different tones. It's just something worth keeping in mind. The more you use your Copics, you'll begin to learn which Copics work well in certain situations, and that will help with your colour selection for your artworks. I'm finishing off the shading with some soft pastel shavings, which I blend in with a tissue. It's a really simple technique and I use it for pretty much all of my drawings, as you would have seen if you've been watching my other videos. And I just went in with some really light greys, I believe, and it just smooths everything out really nicely and gives it a really cool effect. I also went in with some black shading to darken up some of the areas because there's so much white and grey tones in this picture, I found it needed a little bit more extreme shading to help make it stand out. I decided to go with a really minimalistic background, even less than normal. Normally I've got heaps of dots and everything going on and sometimes I think I take it too far, so I tried to tone it down with this one. And originally I was going to have blue dots in the background to try and make it look a little bit like snow, but... I kind of accidentally dropped one of the pens on the paper, I think. I don't really know at what stage it happened, but I made a little dot with my red marker. So <laughs> I decided to just do the dots with red in the background and then add some pink ones as well. And I think it actually worked pretty well because it's still tied in with the red velvet of her jacket. And it made it look a little bit more interesting, I think, than if I went with blue. So I guess it was a happy accident, just like when your mum got pregnant with you. <laughs> Yeah, I just said that. So that's the end of this drawing. I'm glad I made it through. I've actually got a cold again, so my voice is sounding a little bit weird, but I made it. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. It would be much appreciated. And I will catch you guys next week in next week's drawing video.